Yo, what's up guys, Adrian here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create the illusion of having a parallax scroll effect right inside Figma without any plugins using Figma itself. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video and I will show you exactly how we can do this. Okay, so we are going to start by adding a desktop frame. So let's hit F and choose our uh, default resolution for desktop screens, which will be 1440 by 1024. And let's call uh, this frame one because this will be step number one. And let's add, start adding our design components. And for this, we need a pretty simple design that can give the illusion of having three dimensional space. So let me just hit T and start adding our text. Let's uh, increase the size to like a high value of 80. And let's place it in the middle and holding option drag to resize our text uh, text box and let's middle align our text. I went a little bit too far with the text size, so let's reduce it to, let's say, 70. But we want the text to break uh, like this. That's our text done. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit and I will add a button here. So let's also hit T and start typing our text, get started, and we'll make our text 17, maybe 16 pixels. And let's reduce the F to medium. Hit Shift plus A to add a auto layout frame around and holding Shift and Option, drag on those handles and let's middle align this. Let's middle align this and add a fill of, let's go for something purple like this, round those corners to about 12 pixels and change the fill to white. Let's space it uh, 24 pixels from the top and let's quickly add our header header and i'm not going to create a header from scratch if you want to see how to create a header uh, watch one of my previous tutorials end of the pride it's marked as a chapter so we can quickly navigate to the exact part of the video that i'm discussing this or you can head out to my description and download the ultimate prototyping pack and use the components from that pack as your baseline when designing uh, your prototypes. For our hero image, I'm going to use three screenshots of an app I have previously designed on Dribble. So I'll just drag and drop it here, just right put into a frame. And so option command ng, let's call it one, option command ng, let's call it two, option command ng, and let's call it three. And what I need to do right now to uh, make it a bit prettier, to put it inside of a iPhone model mockup. Select your frame, right click on the canvas go to plugins and i will use the mockup plugin and i believe you need to have a premium subscription uh, purchase to uh, use this library so if you can't afford it uh, you might as well just go to uh, vectory 3d elements and use one of those uh, mockups from the library so i'm not going to use it maybe i'll just show you how you need to have an image of this exact dimensions so for this example, you would need to increase it just so it fills the entire frame here. But I will just use a mockup plugin. So let me just quickly go to the library and let's use this iPhone frame. So let's click on the plus, select frame number one, crop it, paste in canvas. Actually, you know what? I will use this darker color of the iPhone uh, 14 Pro just so I can distinguish it from the background. So let's do it one more time, crop. Paste in canvas, click on the plus, select our frame, crop, paste in canvas, and I will clean it up later. So uh, I'm not worrying about it right now. And our last frame, crop, <clears throat> paste in canvas. And let's click out of the mockup here. And we need to resize it just so we have only this one uh, frame visible. It's best if you put it side by side, uh, just so it's easier. You might actually change the background color because I'm not able to see the signs here. Okay, last image. And you can also drag your rulers. So click Shift plus R to make sure like, like you have the perfect dimensions for all of these images. Okay, perfect. So Shift plus R to remove the rulers and select our first image, drop it inside here and holding spacebar, push it a little bit down and holding option and shift, resize it. And we can resize these from ready and let's put them side by side. 
push them a little bit upwards. Let's push this text a little bit to the top and make sure we are following the 8 pixel rhythm. And lastly, I will just add a background visual just to add some uh, visual impact to our design. So this will be our first frame. Now we will create our second frame. So let's move it to the side, uh, command ND to duplicate it. In here, let's select our iPhone Pro, resize it, push it upwards, and let's also remove the text from here. So let's uh, push it up and double click zero to reduce the opacity of this layer Do the same with our button. And I'm not naming my layers right now because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do it fast, but obviously you would have to name your layers. I mean, you don't have to, but this is just the thing that I'm doing uh, whenever I'm going into development. I already have these layers named and I don't have to worry about naming them again in Framer. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's push our iPhones to the top and don't worry about this uh, space right now. Now we're going to, okay, let me just move them uh, to the side. Now we're going to add a frame. So let's hit F and make it the size of our entire desktop frame. So 440 by 1024 and let's make this fill uh, darker. Now add our text, which this will be our second check section. So introducing, let's place it in the middle and I'll just copy uh, this text over from my reference frame. Increase the size of this text just a bit. And this will be our second section. We can also call it uh, like that. Let's select the second section and drag it on top of our second frame, maybe to about this point, just so it's sitting in the middle. Push this just a little bit uh, further and let's add a slight layer of uh, blur to our um, objects here, just so it's giving a bit more depth that it's losing focus. And maybe just to break this motion down into smaller steps, we'll uh, reduce the size of this frame just a little bit and increase it in the next step. So let's select this frame copy it over and this will be our third step. I need to uh, keep cleaning this. Okay. And now that we have uh, this step, let's select our second section and push it again to the middle and resize it just so it's filling out uh, 10, 24 uh, pixels of space. And let's just resize these. Uh, images again and add a bit more blur to them. So I think that's enough. Let's move on to the step number four. And we can now push it all the way top to the top. Um, and here's the thing. Uh, let's go back to our header and make sure that the header is sitting at the top of all layers. And actually, we need to uh, select this section and paste it on this section number one, move it one step below our he header and push it all the way down just so it's not visible on the frame anymore. We need to have it in all of these frames because when we're starting to animate this and this layer is missing, Figma will try to animate this on, on its own. So this will probably fade in instead of just uh, slide in from the bottom. Let's make sure that the header is sitting on the top. And one more time, uh, you need to make sure that your layers are named the same way. So this frame 160 uh, will not animate the right way because the name of the container is different. So we need to make sure that all of your names um, are similar as well as the placement of these layers on the frame is uh, exactly the same as on the frames that you want to animate. Select our logo and our links and make sure that they are white just so they're visible on top of our frame. Let's select it one more time and select our second section frame and add our visual inside and paste it behind the text. And yeah, we can leave it at 30%. And let's make sure that the same image is sitting in all of those uh, frames as well. Just make sure that the visibility is set to zero. And let's just keep adding this image onto our second section and reducing the Opacity. And let's move on to our sixth step. I know it's a lot of steps, but it's a, a pretty complex animation. And let's reduce the size of this image uh, just a tad bit and increase the opacity to 100% by clicking zero. 
and remove the text from here. So move it up and double click zero. And the next step will have the second section. So let me just find it on the canvas here on the frame. Uh, we'll have it slide out of view. So let's click shift and hold spacebar to move it upwards. Again, select all of these uh, groups and reduce the opacity to zero. Let's add another frame with width of 1440 and height of 1024. Let's call it a third section. And let's paste our elements inside here. We'll use this image and I will add uh, the animate text. And I'll just need to make sure that the text is sitting behind our iPhone Pro uh, frame. Let's select your third section, move inside of your frame and position it right inside here. Um, let's duplicate this frame, select our third section, move it all the way up. And again, make sure the header is sitting at the top of all frames. Same here. And let's also change the color to black again just so it's uh, visible on the background let's select this iphone uh, 14 pro image frame hit k to access the scale tool and holding shift uh, just reduce the size of this frame and reduce the opacity to zero and do the same with the text and now that we have all of these frames all we need to do is we need to connect them and in figma you can't really use the scroll trigger like you can in Adobe XD principal or prototype. So we need to give the illusion of having the crawling motion and we'll achieve that by just using the on drag trigger. Okay, so our trigger will be on drag. Our type of animation will be set to smart animate and we'll use a slow animation with the speed set to 600 milliseconds. R let's repeat the same animation on all of the remaining frames. So Okay, so let's hit play and see what we're standing at if, and if there's anything we need to uh, fix. So let's click and drag on our mouse and see uh, the transitions taking place. And you see that they're pretty snappy in some um, in some cases. So we might uh, want to you know play around with trigger timing uh, just to see if you can find the right uh, fluid motion. So let's give it a quick test run and see if it's working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag on my mouse to give the illusion of scrolling down the page. And as you can see, our animation is working uh, just fine as we wanted it to work. And before we go, I've got some important announcements to make. If you're interested in prototyping, I've got some exciting news for you. The waitlist for the prototyping masterclass is officially open as of today. If you're ready to take your design skills to the next level and learn all there is to know about prototyping, how to help me build my personal brand and close over $5,000 worth of projects in the past two years alone, join the waitlist today. We are going to start a pre-sale in about two weeks, but the number of spots in the pre-sale will be limited to 1,000 only. So if you want to secure your spot now and be the first to know when the course pre-sale starts, join the waitlist. The link to join the waitlist is in the description of this video. Okay, that's it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This was your Adrian, and I'll see you very, very soon.